so in Nick in, in invited us and and we we wanted to to be here on a capacity of explaining our story and our experience within the world of augmented reality. I've devoted the last 13 years to augmented reality and and I've seen good, bad and ugly. Um, and I think that right now is the, there's a great great momentum of course, everyone knows about that, but also a great opportunity for startups. So what I would like to share with you is a bit of um, what we do um, a few use cases that I think um, nailed it uh, in the sense of what they deliver. And then I will also explain you more like technically how you could do this with, with us, with Kachum. Okay. So in a, in a nutshell, what we do is uh, we are a software platform. Okay. I will, I will tell you more about the ecosystem later, but we help customers basically connect the physical world with the digital world. Um, for uh, many different reasons, but probably the two more most common uh, areas as are fast moving consumer goods and packaging and print and media okay so in these two cases is where we we see more uh, repetitive patterns and, and people come up with their own uh, local ways of of uh, working on on the local market using our tools okay. These are kind of the, the two areas where, where we sit. And I think that this is uh, probably the best time to start in augmented reality. So the projections, uh, I want to enter into the um, how, do, how analysts do these forecasts. Um, but it's, it's clear that those are huge, huge markets. And there is some debate about augmented reality and virtual reality who will uh, dominate the, the idea or the, the anal analysts, what they say is that probably augmented reality will dominate um, because virtual reality is mostly about content and with augmented reality you can span to uh, many other uh, use cases. And image recognition of, uh, and image and object recognition is also a field where, where Kachum is involved and is uh, quite related to augmented reality but it also departs in other directions um, because it can also be within only the digital world where you can analyze uh, pictures and understand pictures. Okay. Um, and I named or I, I put these companies here because there has been a lot of um, merge and acquisitions lately. So these companies are uh, enlarging their teams um, because they are going to bet heavily on, on augmented reality and, and image recognition. I think Tim Cook was explicitly mentioning augmented reality in his uh, last um, in the last event uh, as something that they have been investing in. They are they are pulling um, buying companies and pulling talent. Um, so uh, uh, we we came across this uh, an, a study that was asking people um, if they have ever ever used augmented reality on their phone uh, to do a number of things. So if you cannot read them, <coughs> the top one is face swapping or face masks. Um, so this is typical for um, yeah, consumer applications where you have fun just by doing a selfie. You are two people, you, you swap faces, and, and definitely it's, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of interest there. I think uh, very successful applications um, have been out there do doing these kind of things. But for me, it was very interesting to see the second one. Scan label on food or drink item to get more information. <clears throat> okay? So this is almost the same as having the fun of face swapping. Okay? Which means that people are changing their habits in, 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 in purchase. Okay? So they are, they are no longer buying without reading. They are no longer buying without digital information to support their purchase. Okay, so they are scanning because they want to know more. And then, of course, uh, well, there are a number of, like, try makeup, try glasses, try, try watches. So all of this is, is now possible. And I think that one of the reasons why now augmented reality is becoming so credible and, and people are trying to forecast how big this will be is because the technology is ready. So the smartphones, the tablets, the, the glasses even uh, uh, will come up very soon. Uh, and also the software that goes with that is, is kind of ready. There are still some challenges, of course, but the advantage is that, I don't know, five years ago, probably all of this was a bit of a, 
uh, dreaming and, and maybe too much in the lab environment, like at universities or academia. And now it has become uh, much more uh, mainstream. So I think I could not pass without talking about Pokemon. Uh, <laughs> um, and, the, and the thing is that uh, as much as I try to avoid it, even my son is asking me to download it. He, he believes it's very expensive, so that's why I keep him out of it. Uh, but I, I, I haven't told him it's free. Um, so let's look at Pokemon Go from, a, from the perspective of if we wanted to do something like Pokemon Go, or what lessons can we learn from Pokemon Go? And I think that um, the... So here, it's, uh, we cannot ignore that Pokemon is a brand that is very well known, so they tapped heavily on that. Well, then, one of the personal frustrations that I had when Pokemon Go was, had such a huge success was that I've known several uh, location-based games, mobile games, that have been out and that have been struggling to get users and users to move to certain places to do stuff, etc. And then suddenly, everyone is catching Pokemon. So I think that, I mean, that's not my story. That's for them, it, it might have a, a little bit of, of frustration, but definitely in this case, they nailed it because they used a brand that was well known with an execution and that was uh, well thought. So I think that um, one, of the, one of the insights is to remember that gamification is still a very powerful tool. So whenever you're thinking about a mobile application, even it's, if it's a utility app, adding a gamification factor is, is something to, to keep in mind. People like playing. Um, another uh, example that I wanted to take is, is uh, rather oldish, but I, I really like it uh, for one reason. And I will, I will pull in the, the video and, and tell you why later. So here the, the concept is very neat, is you can try it at home before you buy it. So you don't even need to go to the shop. And actually I think recently IKEA announced that they will start delivering home, uh, not as they were doing until now, which was uh, rather expensive, but in, in a way that you can really buy as if it was an online shop and <clears throat> deliver it uh, home. So the fact that you can see how it will look like at home uh, before you, you buy it and, and, and go through the catalog uh, makes a lot of sense. But the reason why I pulled this example is because um, they don't mention augmented reality. Okay? So think about this for a second. So in the case of Pokemon Go, uh, when you choose uh, the AR viewer, you're, you're actually prompted to choose AR. So it's, it's like a call to action to use AR. But it, it doesn't need to be that way. The fact that we forget about augmented reality, and actually we, we have other customers that talk about magic or talk about interactivity, but they don't talk about augmented reality because augmented reality is just a way of visualizing things. It's not a product in itself. It's not a solution in itself. You have to fulfill something. In this case, it's about uh, being able to buy, be, being able to see before you want you, you are going to buy, okay? So if you're... Um, 
willing or thinking about augmented reality or, or if you have friends that are thinking about it, uh, my message here would be to forget that you're doing something related to augmented reality and focus more on the value that, that you're going to deliver with, with that application. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is another example. Uh, it's very, um, very simple. You take the app of uh, the WineWo app, it's a French app, and I think the catalog is about 200,000 uh, white uh, wine bottles. Okay, you can scan it and get product information. Okay, why this is convenient? Because uh, you don't have to search through text or categories. You just snap a picture, and it immediately captures the the identity of that bottle. Um, the the advantage for well, I mean, there are several advantages here, but I want to mention a few. So. For starters, I think it's about almost 50% of French consumers look on the internet for their purchases. Okay, so this is telling you that wherever you put, however you put yourselves, people will try to find information on the internet for that purchase, even if it's the uh, a price tag that is not very very high. Uh, the second one is the moment you're in the digital world, you start having analytics. So you can start gathering information about which wine bottles are more frequently searched and in which locations. So you can even go to a restaurant and say, look, you're lacking this amount, I mean, these brands of wine, and actually you can even anticipate locations where you, you should deliver more because it's becoming uh, trendy, for instance. So the, the advantage of image recognition in this case is really that you move it from the physical world to the digital world, and inside the digital world, you start having all the advantages of metrics, analytics, um, taking advantage of location, etc. cetera. Um, this is another example, Print. It appeared on, on our video. So Print is a company that uh, raised about $1 million in Kickstarter to produce these cases. Okay, so this is a docker that falls into your smartphone and that acts as a Polaroid camera. So you, you take a picture with your smartphone and this case prints out a picture. Um, afterwards, uh, Zofia has, has brought a, a couple of samples and can, can show you how it, how it works. Yeah, not the case, but the, we have two photos that I Yeah, the, the case is coming to our office, but not, we, didn't, we didn't have it yet. Um, and in this case, what they realize is that, so how, how this works, if, if you didn't capture it from the video, is that whenever you take a picture, you not only can print that picture, but you can also capture about six, seven seconds of video, okay? And then when you scan that picture, the real picture that was printed, you see overlaid the video that you captured. Now, this is very valuable for memories. And if you think about why would you print pictures when typically printed pictures is going down is because you want to keep that at hand and you want to see and leave that moment again and again. So actually print uh, is, a, is a customer that works uh, quite close to us uh, with, with some of the advanced features that they have and, and they have told us that, the, that this magic um, feature that they have on pictures is, is uh, is a reason for retaining their customers. So it's, a, it's an advanced feature that people like and that people co uh, keep on using. Um, so increasing quite substantially the level of difficulty is uh, a field in augmented reality that is not maybe so much spoken like in tech blogs, but uh, we go re regularly to augmented reality conferences, actually in three weeks we're going to one in Berlin, and the topic of industrial uh, applications of augmented reality is very, very important, and it, there's a substantial amount of money and substantial amount of interest, okay? So let me tell you why this is interesting. So if, um, if you can, so, in this video, in, you will see how the video works and it shows how our technology works with this kind of, of environment. But basically the, the, the principle is very simple. If you can help a field agent that is um, operating with a certain equipment with instructions or with remote guidance, that person is much more empowered. And if you think that 
the typical problem that they have is that if you have, say, air conditioning installations, no? So on that rooftop over there, whenever there's a problem, there's a guy that goes there, okay? So that guy that goes there, in principle, is trained to solve it. But if he or she cannot fix it, needs to call to a superior hierarchy, and this person is responsible for a larger area, okay? So that building can be out of air conditioning for a week because that higher level person cannot really go to all the buildings all the time, okay? Whereas if the person that is in front of that equipment can receive instructions or can have um, additional guidance to what they know at that moment because of the basic training that they received, uh, they save a lot of cost, okay? Another advantage, and I think this comes from a case study by Boeing, the airplane company, is that they realize that uh, by using instructions through augmented reality, they reduce errors. So when they, they are mounting equipment, there are sometimes steps that are misleading or that they don't perform exactly as they should, and this uh, creates trouble so that the piece has to be refurbished or, or, or whatever. So let me show you what we did for this industry. Here's a final check that everything is in place and it's indicating that he can now reopen the valve. So of course this, well we did this with a, what's called a structure sensor. So this is a depth camera that uh, measures objects in, in uh, like their three-dimensional shape from, from by sending light and reading how much light takes to come back to the camera. So. Um, I don't know if you have questions or you want to take them at the end. For me, it's okay. If you, if you have any questions of what I told you so far, just uh, raise hands or um, um, tell me that I'm wrong. It's also fine. Uh, so for me, when I was thinking about um, how to start in augmented reality, I thought that one of the things that is important is to understand the ecosystem. Uh, which is not uh, not very particular, but I think that it is important to to understand that you don't need to implement the full stack of necessary equipment and software and etc. Um, the second one, even though I won't, won't enter much, is to choose the value proposition and the market that you want to attack because like being in augmented reality doesn't mean that you have to fix something for industri industry, industrial applications like airspace and oil and gas, plus magazines, plus blah, blah, blah. People tend to focus on a niche market where they are strong and, and then use vendors like, like us. And I think here, if you are into lean startup and lean methodologies, probably that's the, way, the best way to go. Uh, try to understand the market, the customers that, the, that you have, and, and what's their interest. And the third, uh, probably the third step would be to, to integrate a vendor like us, and I will tell you like the basics of how it works with, with us, okay? So, typically, uh, so this reads from left to right, um, there are user needs related to a change in paradigm of how they access information. So what I was telling about the wine bottles, for instance, or um, how they consume data. So being able to visualize things in a different way, like the industrial application that I was mentioning. There is underlying technology, and that's, that's why I think that now is a good time, because the 
computer vision part, the rendering part, especially on mobile, has advanced so much in the last few years. And then there are new sensors like depth sensors uh, that allow you to do uh, quite fantastic things like moving around and measuring this entire space and then uh, start playing a game inside this room, for instance. No? Smartphones, tablets, and then there's a whole wall of smart glasses like the um, the Epson Movirio, the ODG. Um, so these are glasses that you can see through. So the first most well-known example is Google Glass. Uh, the only uh, limitation of Google Glass from this perspective is that you would see the information on, a, on the tip of your eye and not in front of you, like mixed with the wall. Okay? So this is somewhat fixed already and, and there are some good, good cameras here. So moving to the platform that supports this, and just linking things. So Project Tango is a project by Google that produced a tablet that basically scans the wall um, for, for different purposes. The Intel RealSense camera is also a depth sensing camera that is installed in some tablets like from Lenovo and others. Um, Occipital is a depth sensor camera. Music and ODG are two examples of, of glasses, but there's also Epson and there are other providers. And in software vendors, I didn't put them all. Um, but I wanted you to figure out where Kachum sits, okay? So we are a software vendor, so we are a platform. We allow others to build stuff. Moodstocks and Metayo, so Moodstocks was into image recognition and Metayo was into augmented reality, uh, both out uh, probably for five years. Probably Metayo was older when it was uh, acquired by Apple. Um, and this was my, comes back to my comment about that <clears throat> these companies are being active at acquiring talent and acquiring, acquiring uh, intellectual property. The next step is like our natural uh, customers. So these are integrators that build applications for other people. So for instance, for Bosch, uh, there is an integrator that works for us, uses our tools, uh, produces the creativity, the content, the infrastructure, etc., for Bosch according to the requirements. Okay? Print is slightly different, so print doesn't have an integrator. They, they basically have their own developers that talk to us um, um, straight away. Glamour, for instance, the Glamour magazine is from the, the, the publisher Condé Nast, and they used a third-party integrator, a digital agency that does mobile apps, that looked at our um, SDKs and our APIs and said, okay, we have to put these things together, and, and everyone is happy. Okay. Um, so the reason why I love Kachum, besides being a co-founder, is uh, the, for several reasons. So, so the first one is um, what we, we say that it's real world tested because one of the things that we have devoted a lot of effort into is that we try to feed back our customers' use of our technology into the development of the technology. Okay, so very early on, um, we have had a lot of customers saying, look, this image is not working for this customer, or under these conditions, this is not working, etc." And this is, these are real users scanning from different angles in different conditions, like poor light, like here, um, etc. that is not like what you would find in a laboratory. It's the real world, okay? The second one is uh, usability. So we are a strong believers that the magic has to happen seamlessly for the user. You don't need to ask the user, scan this way. The user should just take the smartphone. They already know how to take pictures. I mean, they know that if you do like this when you're taking a picture, it's blurred, okay? But still, it should work. And that's the kind of things that uh, we look at. Um, in terms of accuracy, so we have been benchmarked uh, several times and, and our technology achieved uh, more than 20% be better results than our closest competitor at a 98% recognition rate. Okay? So if you think about it, this means that in a magazine like a Glamour that has certain pages that say scan here to get to an online shop, one out of five customers would scan knowing that there's some interactive content there and the system would say no image found. 
And this is just because, I don't know, there was pure illumination or the angle was wrong. So in our case, we make a lot of effort in, in, this, in this regard. And the last one is scalability. So we have uh, a number of customers that have deployed this at a very large scale. One of our customers um, did a campaign for the World Cup. And this campaign was super successful in terms of traffic, and it needed to scale to a massive amount of users uh, doing those scans. So this is something that we also, also pay attention to. So I will move on through a few slides uh, very quickly um, regarding how we provide this to you. Okay? So the, the, our product is called Crafter, and it's a software service that combines a number of things. Okay? So we have the mobile SDK, so that's what you would embed into your application to do the connection with, uh, with the recognition or with the augmentation. So we have um, the cloud image recognition SDK. This one is, uh, what it does is basically take the picture, send it to the cloud, and in the cloud the magic happens. The on-device image recognition is everything is embedded, so for cases where you don't have internet connection, for instance. Um, and the augmented reality SDK is for the augmentation, for this part that over, starts overlaying videos, 3D objects, and, and this kind of interactive content. Then we have a content management system, so you upload the images to, the, to our cloud and you start managing them, so making the connection between the picture and the um, activity that you want on top of it. There is a content creator, so this is a tool that uh, through, a web, through a web browser you can design the look and feel of the experience. Okay? And then there are APIs, so for those of you who are developers, so this is uh, a way to communicate your system with our system in an automatic, um, automatized way. And then of course we have uh, some support channels. So how this is done? And, it's basically done in three steps. So whenever you have an idea in mind, we provide a lot of flexibility, and it, it, it goes like that. So the first one is to choose the technology. So I was saying <clears throat> you have the image recognition as the case and the augmented reality as the case, and they serve different purposes. Even though within augmented reality, you, as a starting point, you would perform an image recognition, this is the case sits separately because all the augmentation, the rendering, all of this is a sophisticated part that has to run on, on the device. And it's available across uh, different platforms like iOS, Android. We also have a, a plugin for a website. So we, uh, one of our customers did not produce a web, uh, mobile app. What they did is integrate our software inside their app, their website. And what happens is that when it through the responsive website, when it becomes very small, it identifies that that's a, uh, that's a tablet or a smartphone, which will have a camera. And then you can open the camera directly from the web browser. And for those of you who are uh, really into creativity and interaction, Unity is a great uh, game platform, and we have a plugin to use the, that platform. And the second choice that you have to do in terms of technology is where will your app run? <clears throat> so, if you know that your app will not have availability with the internet, it's very wise to run everything embedded into the application. So, for instance, if you, your app is, to, uh, is for a supermarket and inside the supermarkets there is no internet connection, it makes a lot of sense to have the catalog pre-loaded into the application. Another option is a cloud-based application. So, for instance, if you're running a magazine, and this magazine has new um, issues every month, uh, you know that you will be keep, it, keep changing the content. So you don't want to publish a new app every time there is a new issue. What you want is to manage everything from the cloud, remove stuff, add new stuff, etc. Okay? One of the advantages of the cloud-based applications is that any change that you do in the cloud is immediately available for the mobile app. Okay? Yes? Yes. So did you hear the question? So basically the question is whether, um, because you upload everything into the content management system of the cloud, you can create what we call a bundle, which is like a zip file that you put into your application. 
you can not put anything, upload it to the App Store, and then at initialization, pull that bundle and also synchronize. So you make changes in the cloud and you ask the app to synchronize whenever you want. It will look for changes and, and fetch the changes. Okay. Um, and then you can also produce hybrid applications. So a typical case for this would be, <clears throat> say you have a, um, so for instance, a magazine, again, but because you want that the experience is very seamless, as soon as the user scans a page, you pull all the data from the cloud and you make it immediately available. So any other page that the user scans can happen on device. And another case is, um, for instance, in an e-commerce where you have a, a long tail shape of products. So you have a few that are very frequently demanded and a long tail that is not so often demanded you can embed into the application those that are frequently demanded or even use the synchronization to keep updating this small list of 100, maybe 1,000. And then the long tail is for the cloud. So you will fetch it whenever a user, you, you can scan first on the local database and if you don't find it, uh, try to fetch it um, in the cloud. This is about uh, creating content. Um, so a couple of comments about this. So the first one is the way things are structured in our content management system. So for every given app, typically you would have a collection of what we call items. So items are um, either augmented reality items or image recognition items. So a typical image recognition item would have one or more images. So imagine you have a package of a serial, a serial box and you want to be scannable from the front and from the back, so you would have both images uploaded. And then, I don't know, both images would link to the same URL that is a product page, okay? And for augmented reality, you would have a single image, that is the trigger image, the one that you will scan and pop up something, and then whatever creativity you, you want on top. And for the creativity part, that's the content creator that I was mentioning before. So this is a web browser. You can um, see how a 3D model would look like. You can uh, rotate it, you can scale it, etc., and place it wherever you want. You save, edit, or you publish, and it's ready, okay? And the other thing that you can do through the APIs is to do this same thing, but once you learn the structure, so say you are always so for instance, one of the examples that uh, I showed before, there, were a guy, there was a guy, um, the, the application, you could like put uh, hearts, like likes on top of objects, right? So you are not, because this is user generated, you want to automatize this process. So you want to be able to, once you know how a heart should look like on top of an object and for every user it is exactly the same, you can use the APIs to do all, all of this um, at once. Okay, and then you publish. Um, so you, it's either in the cloud and then every change, as I said before, is available immediately to the, to the app or download or synchronize and then, and then go. Um, okay, so I will now come back to the case of print and explain you how they are using our tools for that, okay? So, um, for starters, because every user has their own doc, their own print case, they are creating individually uh, content. So what they do is use what's, what's called the management API, which is the one that uses the content management system. So the app says, okay, I have a new image. It sends to the cloud through the management API and it already sits in our cloud. Define the the video that, put, that sits on top, all, the, all, all of these elements are done through the management API. Then if you hand in to another person the picture that you printed, like the demo that uh, Zofia can show you later, um, you're, we are using cloud image recognition. So if, I ha if you have the app and you download the print app um, and scan my picture, what, what will happen is that your, your scanning functionality will send an image to our cloud, it will, it will go through all the users, through all the pictures, identify the right one, and then show it, okay? That's because I decided to share my picture, okay? I made it available to others. Um, also, 
because sometimes people are taking pictures when they are at a bar or in locations that are not necessarily well covered with internet, they use the on-device functionality. So the, the, the user can scan his or her own pictures uh, even without internet connection. And then, of course, the functionality of augmented reality, which is what makes the possibility of watching the video on top of the um, real picture. And now coming to, to the end, so I wanted you to keep <coughs> these three things in mind. So I think it's a perfect time uh, to start your business in augmented reality. The technology is quite ready. The market is quite trained. Um, so it's, it's, it's definitely a, a good moment. The industry is very large and very broad in the number of things that can be done. I just picked a few examples. Um, but you will see things in healthcare, you will see things in, in, in other industries. So pick the right place where you want to see it, whether you want to develop new technology in hardware because you are specializing in this or you know people, or you want to be more on the creativity part. There's a place for everyone, believe me. Um, and the last one is I, what I tried to convey with, with this presentation, even though it was just a glimpse of what we do, we're quite flexible in the number of use cases that we empower, and, and this is all free to start with, so I invite you all to, to do it. And uh, last but not least, so we are on a quest to achieve 10 billion object interactions per year by 2025, and we cannot do it without you. So if uh, you are into this or you want to, or you know people that are into this and they want to try Katsum, we are more than happy to, to help them. And here's the team for if you want to come, come visit us. Okay, thank you very much.